prairie voles are among the most doting mammals on Earth. Like some humans, males and female prairie voles form lifelong bonds, share parenting duties, and males jealously guard females. In contrast, a nearly identical cousin has adopted a more swinging lifestyle. When the promiscuous cousins have sex, there are no strings attached and no cuddling afterwards. In fact, if they get too close, they're more apt to fight than to playfully nibble. What's driving these two distinct approaches to mating? And could the answer help us understand human relationships? When Young peered into the vole brains, he discovered that both species were releasing the same love cocktail as humans. But there was one big difference between the vole species. Only the monogamous voles had sufficient brain hardware in the form of receptors that could soak up the bonding chemicals. Hormones like oxytocin or vasopressin can only act by binding to a receptor. Uh, it's sort of like a key in a lock. Well, when we looked in the brain of the prairie voles, we found that these reward areas were loaded with oxytocin and vasopressin receptors. The promiscuous voles have fewer receptors, and Young suspects that could explain their free-loving lifestyle. To investigate his theory, Young turned to a virus. His plan was simple. He injected a virus into the brain of a promiscuous vole. The virus sliced into the vole's DNA and inserted the instructions to create more receptors. Brain scan images revealed success. But would the new receptors change behavior? To find out, Young mated the virally altered vole with a female. then separated the couple. Next, he tethered the mated female in a box. At the other end of the box, he tied down a temptress. And finally, he introduced the virus-injected vole. Would the male remember the days in the love nest? Or would he be back on the prowl? In an evolutionary flip-flop, the virally altered vole returned to dote on his mate. A virus that altered just one gene had dramatically changed their behavior. <laughs>